In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to quit your nine to five job selling on Amazon. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I went through this thought process when I was about to quit my job, um, how I thought about it. I get a lot of questions. When is the right time to quit my job to do Amazon full time? And I've helped a couple people do this. Um, so I kinda wanna go over how I thought about it some tactics you could use to make you yourself feel even better about the decision you made, and just some things to think about that I didn't think about when I quit my job. With that being said, let's just get into it. So when you are thinking about quitting your nine to five to sell full time on Amazon, some things to think about. One, is the business actually profitable? Are you making money? Are you able to pull money out? So a lot of people are working a nine to five and they can roll all their money they're making on Amazon back into the business because their nine to five is paying their expenses, their insurance, their rent, food, all that kind of stuff. But once you leave your nine to five, um, you now have to take that money out of Amazon and the business, um, which could be definitely... Um, it seems on paper, right? Oh, I'm going to quit my job. My sales are going to double. Therefore, what I could take out is going to double. It's going to be fine. That is not always the case. So one of the things I did, um, to kind of test the waters is I had about two weeks of vacation. So basically what I did, I took a week at a time. So I did for, for me to preface this, this is when I was selling books. So I would do the same thing doing OA. Uh, it would just look different. So what I did was I pretended I was full time. So basically I was like, all right, you're full time. What are you doing Monday through Friday? Um, so I was like, all right, like if I was full time, I would go sourcing like probably three days, um, get all the books process them, get them off to Amazon. I'd have a goal of how many books to get, or I'd have a sourcing goal. And then I would see how that feels. Most importantly, you want to see how it feels. Do you like it? Did it go well? If you can't even sit down for a week and plan out a week of what it's going to be like, it's probably not a good idea to quit your job, which bringing in a majority of your income. So really think through that. And I ended up doing it twice because I wanted to make sure the first time wasn't just a fluke. For me, I did it, I think it was probably in the winter time and then in the summertime. Both times I really liked it. Both times I was able to source like two or three times more um, than I normally would be able to, um, just doing it on the side. So that was a huge eye opener for me. I was like, I really like this. Um, everything went really well. Obviously, this is only two weeks out of 52, but I just wanted to get a feel for what it would be like if I was full time, what I'd be doing, do I have a plan, and just execute on that. And most importantly, do I like this? Do I think this could work? All that kind of stuff. Number two, I had a plan for my money. So I had about a six month emergency fund uh, when I left. More importantly, I had probably maybe like three months, four months of spend uh, in the business bank account. This is super important, especially if you're doing online arbitrage. If you're gonna have more time, you're gonna need more capital, right? If you're gonna be spending two to three times more on online arbitrage products, well, you're gonna need more capital. So the last thing you wanna do is kind of quit your job, be like, oh, I'm spending two to three times more, and then you run out of money and your business stops growing because you don't have enough capital to do so. So I, that's kind of how I plan to do it. Um, what I would do is my nine to five paid for all my expenses plus more. Um, so what I would do is I would save that plus more and just a savings account, just put it there um, until I kind of hit the goal. Uh, I didn't take anything out of the business. I just kind of took it for my nine to five, put that in an account, 
And then I was like, you know what? Once I hit X amount, about six months, I'm gonna feel much better. Uh, just to have peace of mind, knowing it's like, all right, if you do not make a single dime selling on Amazon, you would be fine for six months, half a year, not making a single penny. So that brought me a lot of peace of mind and really, really helped me make the decision. I am not saying you have to have six months. That is what made me feel comfortable. If you're cool with like two months or three months or one, or whatever you wanna do. But for me, it was six months and three months in uh, basically spend um, on Amazon. And now this was for books, so my spend was a lot different. I don't know if three months spend is super practical for OA, um, but I'm just gonna put that out there. Number three. Um, I paid myself out of the business bank account to see what it would feel like. This is super important because it's not necessarily, in theory, it's like, oh yeah, I could definitely take out, let's say you're trying to get $2,000. So let's just put it out there. You want to be able to, you need to take $2,000 out. So it's real easy to be like, oh yeah, things are going great. I could just take the two grand out every month. It's going to be fine. What I'd highly, highly suggest you do is take, move, transfer the $2,000, or if you wanna do it every two weeks, say, okay, I'm gonna take $1,000 out of the business every two weeks, like you're paying yourself, and transfer it to another account, that could be your personal account or whatever, um, and see how does it feel. Um, it might be like, oof, this is overwhelming, um, you know, and do it for like three months. Um, oof, like I thought I had a little more cushion. This feels a little more stressful. Uh, ah, I don't know. If you kind of have those feelings, then you kind of have to revisit how much more sales or how much more profit you have to do before you could quit. For me, it felt fine. I, and you could always just move the money back, like no problem. Um, but for me, it felt fine. It actually motivated me because there was less money in that account. So I wanted to kind of build it back up again. So for me, it motivated me. It felt fine. I didn't have to worry about it. Another thing you could do, um, if you really hate your job and really try to get out is you could supplement, um, kind of with your emergency fund or could plan it that way. So let's just say maybe you put eight months into the emergency fund instead of six. And so for the first two months, you're gonna use, you're gonna pay yourself with half uh, of the money from the emergency fund and half from your business. And hopefully you'll be able to kind of bounce out where you can just take it all from the business eventually. Um, so know what it feels like. Two or I think I'm on four, um, depending on your situation, um, know what you're going to do for insurance and healthcare. Now this differs by state. So I'm just going to talk about my experience. For me, I went on Cobra. Um, so basically my employer has insurance. So usually when you lose insurance, uh, that creates an event which allows you to buy new insurance or purchase insurance or you could go on Cobra, or that's how it works here. Cobra is basically, it depends on the company, but you could stay on your same health insurance plan for about three to six months. I think mine lasted three, but you basically pay what your company was paying for you. So I was working at where I was working, I was probably paying maybe like $250 um, every month. It was just coming out of my paycheck. Uh, for insurance or healthcare. Um, and then once I left, it cost about $550. So I literally just write the company I used to work for a check for $550. I would get, uh, you know, the full coverage I had. Uh, for me at the time, it was just easier to kind of stay with that until I kind of got some other things situated. And then eventually I bought insurance off of, um, the marketplace. So each state typically has like a health insurance marketplace. Uh, probably just Google your state's health insurance um, and they, it will come up kind of where you buy it from and how that kind of works. 
Um, so that was kind of, it's a big expense. Uh, so you want to know this up front. So figure out um, what your COBRA payment would be. Um, if you feel weird about it, I'm pretty sure you could call the insurance company or there's calculators online what your COBRA payment might be. Um, if you don't want to like ask your boss or HR, stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. The last thing you want to do is kind of quit and be hit with like a $600 or whatever plan uh, that you weren't planning on expense wise and it could just make it more stressful. So think about that. Um, and then what else do we have here? This was the one I did. I am more risk adverse. This one really helped me kind of solidify that I was making one, the right decision, two, it would be okay if it doesn't work out. I tend to be more on the positive side because you have to, but you also have to be realistic. This is a business, um, things could go wrong. Uh, you know, it might not work out. A lot of small businesses fail. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm disincurred. I am just trying to lay out all the facts for you. Um, so I literally made a worst case scenario list. If this business went out, if I went out of business, I got to spend it from Amazon. Um, what would I be able to do? What would I do just to kind of have it? I never like to think like that, but knowing in my head that I kind of had everything lined up it also made me think of not that this is never gonna happen it was just like oh wow this really isn't that risky so for me it's like okay i worked in marketing i was a copywriter um so i amazon uh i get to spend it from amazon what am i gonna do well number one i have the six month emergency fund Granted, I didn't like tap into that, but that is number one. So I'm good for six months. Like I don't really leverage a ton. So once everything's sold through, like I would be able to pay off the, my credit cards. I never keep a balance. So that would be fine. So to have one, I'd have six months. Two, I have the option to get another copywriting job, right? There are plenty and I would probably focus on one um, in the Amazon space. There's tons of software, there's tons of conferences, there's tons of services. There's so much stuff in the Amazon space that requires copy or promotion or newsletters, social media posts, all that kind of stuff. So I'd be very confident that I'd be able to get a job doing something in the Amazon space around marketing or copywriting. Two, I could go the traditional route of marketing and copywriting. No big deal. Three, I could start flipping stuff locally. That's how I started. I could start, go back to my roots, buy cheap furniture, sell it for two, three times the price just to generate a little money until I could like figure out the Amazon suspension or what my next move would be or what I wanted to do. Um, and then kind of how would that make me feel? And it was just like, Oh, like I could get another job. Like it would be fine. Like it's not like I'd be in tons of debt um, or anything like that. Cause just it's not how I run the business. Um, so thinking through stuff like that made it really, really like, oh wow. Like you have a lot of options if this doesn't work. I mean, obviously we want to be like, oh man, like this is going to work. We're going to crush it. All that good stuff. But knowing the downside or the potential downside um, is super important and just really uh, makes you think. Um, and then the super, super down is like, all right, this goes horribly. What happens? Okay, so I can't get a job. I can't do this. I would have to move in with my family. All right, I love my family and stuff like that. And they'd be super supportive of that. I know not everyone has that. But that would kind of be the worst, worst case scenario. And just kind of thinking through that and kind of how I am, I know it would never let it get to that point or be in that situation. Not to say there's anything wrong with being in that situation or anything like that. But just knowing me, I just was looking at that and I was like, 
that the chance of that happening are like 0.0001%. And I was like, well, if it just comes down to it, I'm a hustler, I work hard, I know how to make money. Um, I would just figure it out until things got back together or get another job or whatever I was gonna do. Um, so that in a nutshell is kind of how I thought about quitting my job. I took two weeks off, a week at a time, uh, to kind of just go through, what would this be like? Does it feel good? Do I like it? Um, three, I had a two, I had an emergency fund uh, for six months. Again, up to you, however long you want, or if you don't want one, I don't suggest that. Uh, three, pay yourself, see how it feels like. It's really easy to just keep rolling the money in, but when you start taking money out, it might feel different for you. Um, four, figure out your insurance situation, how much it's gonna cost you. Um, how to kind of get that set up. There's tons of resources online for that. Again, different by every state. And number five, make the worst case scenario list. Hey, this doesn't work out. What does my life look like? How do I feel about that? Can I live with that? Will I be fine? For me, I was just like, you know what? I'm still young. God forbid this happens. I can still go get another job and be totally fine. Um, so that's what I got for you guys. Please like the video, please subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, kinda if you quit your job, what were you thinking through? Or if you think I missed anything, I would love to hear it in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video.